Welcome to my miniature studio today. I am busy with my Tudor cutting and putting together of my Tudor house, but in the meantime, um, people have been asking me a lot about the Louis XIV room box and throne and how it all goes together. So I've asked Roger to do a um, compilation of everything that I did for that and how I achieved that room box in the end. So I hope you enjoy this and I'll be back tomorrow with my framing up of my Tudor house. Throne. So I'm making a wooden frame and I mean if I was a purist I'd make it all wood but I'm not a purist, I'm a creative person and I can make it in all bits and pieces. This will be gilded, it'll have little things on the top and it'll have this little crown that I've made out of Fimo and it'll be painted gold and gilded and that'll be in the centre. And then these have vases on the top of them and they have a kind of a holly that grows out over them and comes up to the top of the crown. And I'm going to make those out of paper and I'm going to paint them and gild them. So it's definitely a mixed medium throne. Now, it's been a bit cold doing the woodwork for the Tudor house and it's also quite cold to actually use Fimo. And so I've had to keep breaking bits off and popping them in my bra to get them warm enough and pliable enough, and Roger's just raised his eyebrows. I've got to remember that they're in there too, of course. And so with the front of the um, little throne, it's got to, it's going to have lions come at the top of the armrests coming down to claws at the bottom. And they were made very simply by finding a face this is a lioness's face, but I quite liked it because it's quite sweet. And pressing it into a piece of Fimo, quite hard, and baking it. And I made this one, and you've got to remember to put lion on it so that you remember it's what it's for. And that's how I made these little faces. So I can make lots of little faces if I wanted to. Bit hard to see them. They will be painted gold and they'll be gilded. So the detail will show up then. And this is the front part of the seat. And that'll also be painted gold and a bit glittery. So it'll be a pretty flash throne by the time I finish with it. So there we go. And that's been my day today. A bit cold and a bit busy. Welcome to my miniature studio. Today I have been busy as usual and I've been making the throne for Louis XIV and I started very basically with wood and Fimo and bits and pieces and so I'll show you a still of that now. So I'm back again now and I um, told you that I've done lots of things to that chair since you saw that but it just shows you that you can gussy up anything with all sorts of bits and pieces and then you give it a spray of gold paint and hey presto you end up with something amazing and I think I can't even get over it myself I just thought this is incredible how it's all come up. My Fimo lion's heads, the paper leaves that I put on wire and the real throne has um, the same sort of leaves and things and there's going to be some gold beads and there'll be bits and pieces still to go on this but this is just the basic gold paint and then I used um, it was actually stuff for making straw hats but I thought it made quite a nice little detail for carved wood
So that will all have red upholstery on it and it'll look quite swish when it's finished. Now for the gentleman that's going to sit in it, well I've been making him as well. Now he's very much in his unfinished state at the moment and I've made him a shape so he'll sit in his chair really well. <laughs> You've just got to imagine him having clothes on at the moment. And he has just been a framework of Chanel sticks and a wool fleece that I've um, felted to give it a bit of uh, volume. And so once he's got his clothes on, you won't see that. Um, certainly you won't see that. He'll just have his lovely undies on and then he'll have his clothes on. And I'll show you this, the stages that I go through when I'm dressing him as well. And I, I thought perhaps I'd do a workshop or I'd just do some worksheets that you could co cover off and have a look at if you wanted to go onto my website. So I'll put it down on my website when I'm finished. And there we have it. So I've got the throne on the go and I've got the man on the go. <laughs> Hi there from a very cold New Zealand and I'm in my studio with the heater going and I've been working today on the throne for Louis XIV for the room box and I have uh, finished it and I'm really happy with it. So it's like I explained yesterday it's made of a whole lot of little different bits and pieces and then it got a really good spray of gold paint which covered all the little joins and the bits and pieces so that was very satisfactory now i've been working on louis the 14th now he's got his nightcap on because his magnificent black hair is just being curled at the moment and he didn't want to show off his bald head but that's his face and I've sort of made him sort of in his 40s, I suppose. I didn't make him a handsome young man and I didn't make him a, a rather rattled old man. I've kind of got him in his 40s. So he's all ready to go once he's got his hair on. And I've made his little hands. And they will go on his body, which has been made. The skeleton has been made already. And I've also, it's interesting when you start delving into the 17th century, because I found out that he likes having red, red heels on his shoes. And so I've made the heel and the sole of his shoe to start. And if you were in favour in the court, you were given permission to have red heels yourself on your shoes. So perhaps that's where the saying, well, heel comes from. So he's got his uh, shoes coming along with his red heels. And goodness knows, I think I'll probably have to tackle the wig tomorrow. I've got it curling around a skewer at the moment and it's in the window, hoping to catch the early morning sun so it'll dry out for me. And then I'll have to show you his next stage of his um, development tomorrow. <laughs> Welcome to my miniature studio once again. Today I've got um, some interesting stuff to show you. It's all about transformations really. And I'm thinking about Louis's wig. And don't you be, you be careful, big cat. And the cats decided to join me. And so with this in mind, I sent my husband up to the nearest town to get some stuff for making a wig, a doll, doll stuff, hopefully. And what he came back with was quite a mi mixture of stuff that he'd been advised by kind ladies to get. And he had got a few things. He'd got a, a piece of false wig. Another little thing that you'd put round your ponytail. That, that's probably all right. I could probably use that. It seems to be a little less strong. And then he brought this, me this wig. And I thought, well, I could do a lot of Louis the Fourteenth hairs with this massive wig. And so I had to have a bit of fun with it. Okay. So 
talking about transformations, I think that's a pretty big transformation. I went from a miniaturist to somebody who works in the local garage and I thought, I don't really feel creative in this wig. I'm going to have to quickly take it off, which I did. And I'm back to normal again now. So having done that little bit of fun, I had to still think about Louis. Now I did has eventually found things that I could use to curl his wig. And so Louis has had a transformation as well from his nightcap to his full head of hair. Now I did this, I made his lovely curls by winding viscose or mohair, I used mohair, some, some of it was mohair, around a skewer and blasting it with my hair dryer. So it made, stand up there, really. it made a nice ringlet. And it was just, I just simply pegged one end to the skewer, twisted it around and blasted it with the hair dryer. This is a bit wet, so it's probably not going to, but might hold. And I just slid it off because it's wet it's not going very well there we go and it will make a little ringlet when it's dry so that was that was actually mohair you can do it with not so much that that was a bit strong and it wouldn't curl but this is a little less strong and that you could probably do it with this as well I haven't tried it yet it takes a wee bit of time but it's a possibility so that's how you make, if you had um, proper dolls, sometimes you get dolls hair that's not curled and you can do it the same way. You can wrap it around a skewer wet and dry it and it'll come out with a nice little ringlet. And those who make dolls know all this, you know, this is old stuff to them. So there we have it. So the last time you saw Louis, he had his nightcap on and now he's got his full head of hair. And I've been working on his body. I felt it as basic body. I've given him a pair of breeches there, cotton ones. And he's now got a cotton shirt on. And I've hemmed the arms because what I'll do is I'll attach his fancy sleeves to these arms like they used to do in the old days. I'll lace them onto this body. So he'll have his sleeves attached to this. And then Louis the Fourteenth, he was instrumental in creating the three-piece suit, which was a pair of breeches, a waistcoat and a jacket that all matched. And so he will have breeches and a waistcoat and a jacket on him, so he matches. And he also, his favourite colour was brown, actually. You'd think it would be royal blue or something, but he really did like brown. And in his later images of him as a, as a middle-aged and an elderly man, he always wore brown. I don't think I'll do brown. I'm still, the jury's out on the colours that I'm going to use yet. I haven't found the material, but um, just wait and see. And tomorrow we'll have a different transformation and I promise I won't put on any more wigs. <laughs>
in his waistcoat and I'm going to have to do creative things with lace I think I might have to stain them with coffee so that'll be an interesting thing to do in the next couple of days so that's Louise clothes welcome to my miniature studio it's not a terribly good day and I better warn you we're having a thunderstorm so if the power goes off we'll somehow cope with that and we've just had a hailstorm and our town's been cut off by flooded rivers. So a good day to be inside to do minis. And I've been working on Louis XIV's outfit. And I have made some little sleeves with lace on the bottom. And I've I've laced them to this shirt like um, it would have been done in the past. They would have washed these sleeves maybe two or three times a year and they would have washed a shirt maybe once a year so I'd just take the sleeves off when it needed to be washed so that's him now just one word I think when I'm making my figurines my feet and my hands and my head are always the last things to get put on because it's a real nuisance trying to get legs and arms through sleeves and trousers uh, with with feet on the end of them and hands on the end of them so they always look a wee bit weird until they start to look better and I've been uh, making Louis's jacket and I'm just doing some um, decorative stitching on his collar which will fold over like that and some on the sleeves and I dyed some lace with coffee that I'll put on his waistcoat and then I sprayed it with gold paint and so these little pieces I'll use for decoration so I've really been pulling the stops out of my ingenuity today. And also, this is an old tie back for a curtain. And I'm using the gold thread out of this to do the gold stitching on the jacket. And so these tie backs, sometimes you get them cheap in uh, uh, second hand shops. And you can use the black ones for here and you can use the brown ones for here. And gold ones, obviously, and silver for any fancy stitching that you do and, and any sort of embroidery stitching you do as well. So that's what I've been doing today and while I've been doing Louis's jacket I had been reading up about Louis. I was right in suspecting he was a small man. He was only five foot four and he used to wear high heels and high wigs to make him look taller. And he also controlled his nobles by insisting that they wore very expensive clothes to court and he he had to lend the money to get those clothes made. They were made from silks and satins and velvets. And then he insisted they had two sets. So they were forever in his debt. So it was one way, a clever way for him to keep control of his nobles. And the women didn't really fare very well either because their dresses took up yards of expensive material. So they were probably never out of debt to Louis. So quite a, an interesting man in lots of ways. And he also insisted that all the materials they used for their clothing was French. So he kept the economy burgling along quite nicely. Thank you very much. So it's an interesting that you um, that find out all these things when you're doing a bit of research. I don't often um, do this, but I, I'm making miniature dolls right now. And I'm also giving you a history lesson. <laughs> so tomorrow I'll be finishing off his clothing and hopefully he'll be in a bit more finished state. Welcome to my miniature studio again. I had a busy day today. I worked on Louis XIV's outfit. I tidied up my workshop in the garage so I could get in there tomorrow and start the Tudor Merchant's House. And I was in the office putting all my magazines into plastic bags to send them off to the post office. So, in all, a pretty busy day. No hail, no snow. That was good. But anyway, I had, with Louis, his shoes. I had heels and soles and no shoes on the top. I had legs with no stockings on them. And I had breeches with no legs with stockings on. So I had to get myself into hand and say, right, I have to finish all this. I made the shoes. I sewed the stockings on his legs. Poor fellow. But it was easier that way. Put his breeches on did his waistcoat, did a whole lot of little gold accents on both of his waistcoat and his jacket and finished his jacket and made him a lace cravat and tidied up his hair 
and finally I put him in his chair and I'm really pleased with him. So I'll just have a little pause, I get him ready for his final photo shoot. So here he is sitting in his hall of mirrors in his binary. I had to interview the dogs in the studio to see which ones are going to suit him and the spaniels tended to win. And I have been working on the chandelier and I put some of those little dinky lights in there that are controlled with magnets. And I put two orange ones in there and they look really nice and I'm really happy with that. So just to give you a closer look of, of, of Louis, but it's a bit hard when you're sitting in front of all his mirrors. So he's got a waistcoat which has got little gold thread in it. He's got little gold threads up his lapels. He's got quite nice cotton and lace frills, a little cravat which tied around his neck. And his bloomers, I think his breeches, not bloomers, um, look very tidy. And I put a little bit of lace in the junction where his shoe goes, and I think I've just knocked his buckle off. Stay. And that sort of helped, I think, that transition between his stockings and his shoes. And he's got his red heels on his shoes. So I was really happy with his hair. It looks suitably dishevelled and uh, suitably ringleted. So all good, I think. He's happy. So we'll just put him back down there. And he can have a little rest. And so apart from um, finishing off Louis the Fourteenth, and I can honestly say now he is finished, and I've only got one little surprise to do on this uh, room box before I'm totally finished with it. That must happen in the next couple of days. I...